Hello, everybody, and welcome in to our Thursday night embroidery check-in. I am your host. My name is Latasha Jackson. I am the owner and operator of So Fervent Embroidery. If you are catching this on the replay, please type in hashtag replay and let me know you're coming in from. And thank you all to everyone that's been in here and waiting. Thank y'all so much. We had some technical difficulties again. So let's hope I took care of everything already. But thank y'all so much for being patient and waiting on me to come in. in. And let me know if y'all can hear me okay. Okay, and just check the comments here. Is it... Keelan Crab saying good night. Hi, thank you for coming in. And um, <laughs> Kingsbury Crabs is asking if anybody's home. I made it and she made it on time. Thank you so much for being patient and waiting for me, y'all. Eva Maria is saying hello. Thank you for coming in. Miss Betty is saying hi from, from Somerset, New Jersey. Thank you for coming in. Daisy is in. Hello, everyone. She's coming in from Atlanta. Thank you. Hello. Welcome in. Andrea Craig is coming in from Montgomery. Hello. <laughs> and Sky Lark Designs is alive, not happening tonight. Oh, my. Thank you for waiting. If you're still here, I was just running late tonight, y'all. And Miss Andrea saying one. Thank you. So you can hear us. Okay. You can hear us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, Pretty Eyes Covington. Thank you for coming in. All right, y'all. I have not prepared a whole lot, y'all. Um, I had an idea what I wanted to do tonight. Um, I was almost like an hour or two before trying to decide. I've been looking at designs all day today, and it just was not coming to me because I don't know if it's too early for Easter. What do y'all think? <laughs> Because I'm thinking about Easter already. Let me know what you all think. Right. No words. It happens to the best of us. Thank you. <laughs> I'm thinking Easter. Uh, because um, with embroidery, Iris, okay, I thought about that too. I will have to come back and do that one maybe next week. So, um, because I went on, I prepared for Easter, and I know that's gonna come first. Thank you for that, Eva Marie. Not too early. Thank you, Miss Andrea. Because my my thinking is because we do embroidery, because we do handmade gifts, right? I think you should be started at least a month or so before. You know, it give you a week or so to think about what you're gonna do, get your supplies together. And then give yourself about two weeks to go ahead and get started on your um, your gifts, whatever you're going to gift or sell. And then that'll give you another week or so to just be finished and ahead of the game. That way you're not rushing. So that was my thinking, you know, because with handmade things, we need more time. So we're not rushed and we're not, you know, and even that's giving us time. If we make a mistake, we have time to fix it, too. So I, I thought about it. I said last month. I came in early with um, Mardi Gras and with Valentine's Day. I mean, it's just good to start thinking ahead of time instead of the week of a holiday. That will come. And um, Eva Marie saying that makes sense. Right. So. Things going on. Okay, I'm back. Oh, shucks. I'm back. Can, you, can y'all see me? It kind of went out for some reason. Let me know if y'all can see me. Give me a number two in the chat if you can see me. If I'm back. My connection is unstable. I'm breaking up and freezing. My goodness. One second here. I'm seeing them how have a sec- connected, secure, and strong connection here. Okay. Thank you. So you're saying you can see me. Hello, Z, the amazing. Thank you for coming in. 
And um, how is the connection now, y'all? Am I still breaking up or is that better? And while we do that, I want to go ahead and pull my design up for just a moment here. That's better. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So I'm trying to pull up the design that I'm working on, y'all. Got to pull my software up because I need some help, y'all, with the colors. And I'm gonna share my screen when I get, get it pulled up. Just a moment here. Okay. So let's see if I can share my screen and okay, I'm still trying to get used to this here. Let's see, share my screen here. Okay, so it's not pulling it in here for me. Just a moment, y'all. Just trying to show you the design. Thank y'all for your patience, too. <laughs> Let's see here. trying to get my editing software. This is not being nice to me tonight, y'all. <laughs> I've had no problem doing this last time. Let's see here. Let's try this one more time. If not, I'll try to go another route. Oh, okay, let's see. Okay, there it is. Okay, so let me know if you all can see that. Okay, so let's see. I don't see anything. Let me know if y'all can see that. Give me a number. Just hit a Y. Um, to let me know if y'all can see my editing software. I use So What Pro. A one. Okay, I'm assuming that's a yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so. This is what I'm using tonight. Um, it's going to be a, a chick inside of an egg, um, and it has bunny ears. So let's see here. I'm trying to figure out the colors 
like for the nose. Let me see, with DST, it does not pull it up with the colors. Let's see here. Let me change that file and see if I can close that. Stop sharing just a moment here. Because I don't know what's going to pop up over there, y'all. <laughs> Let's see here. Let me try the PES file. Okay, there it is. There's the colors. Okay, so let's share again. Okay, all right, y'all. So this is what I was trying to pull up. I want to try to help me with the colors here. So I had a yellow fabric. And I had a pink fabric. Now for the nose, y'all, I'm confused. I, I thought I knew what color I wanted to make it. But when I looked at this, I'm like, I, I don't know. <laughs> Let's see here. So because I was going to use a yellow fabric and it has like um, a print inside of it. So that's what I'm going to use for the chick. And... I needed a color for the beak. I, I thought I knew what color the beak's supposed to be, but y'all, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> so this is the color I was thinking for the beak. Or oh, is that not a good color? Or should I go with an orange? Like a darker orange or something? So let me get the other colors that I had. And I had an orange. Let me grab that one. had this one. I'm like, I don't know if that's really a color of a beak. So this is the other color. Is that the color of a beak, y'all? This took me back to school. <laughs> so let me take a look and see what y'all seeing over here. The orange. Okay. Orange. Okay. This one. So are we thinking number, wait a minute, where's the camera? Number one or number two? Number one or number two? Number two, thank y'all. <laughs> okay, so, and this is the color that I'm gonna use for the egg. It's, got, it's pink and it has a little glitter in it. I'm not sure how well that's picking up on the camera. And I'm using white fabric for the ears. Okay, so. And y'all, I, I wanted to share with y'all where this design came from because I found it two different places. So just this will probably be something to kind of be like an eye opener for you guys, too, when you start looking for the dimes. OK, so let's go back here. And I'm going to stop sharing. You're back. <laughs> All right, y'all. So tonight, uh oh, shaking y'all up. OK, so tonight I did not prepare my fabric because I was really like last minute trying to figure out things because I was like, I don't want them to be like, why is she doing Easter already? But I like to get things started early. That way you can prepare. And, you know, if you're making gifts for your family or if you're selling things, you know, that'll give you time to get things made. And so I just have this to the side. I'm going to put my thread by my machine. And... I need to just see which yellow I'm going to use. Yeah, I'm going to try to use this one. So I'm going to set this over by the machine. Let's stick this to the side here. I haven't put a design up in anything, y'all. So if y'all can hang till the end, that'd be great. If not, I understand. <laughs> okay, so. I'm going to come back to the comments. I'm going to go ahead and get started because 
I have not prepared my fabric yet. Let's see here. I don't know, y'all won't be able to see because my ironing board is on the other side behind my camera. Let me see if I can get this other one going here. One moment. Excuse me. Yeah, I'm trying something different. I'm trying to see if I can give another angle to y'all. Now talk among yourselves. Give me a minute. <laughs> I hope y'all okay with that, though. I'm trying to get y'all a different angle. Let's see here. Okay, so let's hope that this works. Okay, one, well, I'm gonna step to the side right here. I'm trying to get this uh, other angle here. Okay, so the other angle here. Oh, yeah. Okay, there we go. So, I'm trying to really give y'all some angles so y'all can see what's going on. Okay, y'all, let me know how is that? Is the sound okay? Is there any feedback coming through there? Let me know because I don't want it to be rough as far as the sound. It's a little blurry. Let me wipe the camera here. And it is dark. Okay, so... See if I can bring this in here. Just a moment, y'all. Thank y'all for for being patient here. I'm just trying to get y'all a better angle uh, because that's how I learn. I like to be able to see the details, right? So And it's dark over here. Let's see if I can switch to view for you guys. Okay, so yeah, you know, this is just my little sheet I like to use to do my fabric on. And I'm going to use my iron. I need to add the heat and bond to the back of my fabric. So, because I didn't do prepping tonight, y'all. And I hope this is okay. Let me go back to the comments before I get started. Okay, so that's better. I hope that angle is okay for y'all. And Andrew and Stitches is saying, love the Easter design. Thank you. And Skylark, please let me know if I'm saying that correctly. Have you ever pre-cut the appliques? No, I have not tried to pre-cut it because that means I'll have to learn a new, a new craft. Because <laughs> I have seen where people use the cutting machine to do it. But that means I'm going to have to learn something else. So, no, I have not tried it. I tried to stay in my embroidery lane 
So no, I haven't tried it. And Miss Andrea said, if you pre-cut the applique, it must be precise. Could be done with a cutting machine. Awesome. That's exactly right, Miss Andrea. Thank you for sharing that. And she said, the sound is good. And you want to say it correctly? Thank you. <laughs> okay, guys. So ladies and gents. So I'm going to go ahead and get my iron going. Get that heating up. And this little thing here, it gets hot really fast. So I have my heating bond here and I purchased it by the bolt. I hope this angle is okay. I'll try to work better to get y'all some, um, some more lighting. Hopefully we get better with, with each one that we do. Uh, it's not a good idea to plug the iron. I'm gonna take a step back and unplug it because I forgot how fast it heats up. So let me set this to the side. Okay. And I'm gonna cut me some heat and bond here. And if you need to see the name of this, I want to say I have it linked in my Amazon storefront, and it is an affiliate link, but this is what it looks like, heat and bond light when you do an applique. Okay, so just gonna roughly cut, probably gonna end up having too much, but it's okay. So maybe I probably hate to see it wasted, but now we're running a little tight on time. Put that to the side. So I have a smaller piece of this yellow here. And just gonna cut a piece of a piece of gold. I usually try to cut it smaller than my fabric. Okay, so that's roughly, it's okay there. And this is the pink. And so I don't know if y'all can see the glitter in there. Okay, so, and I'll usually go ahead and put a piece across the whole thing here. <clears throat> it's no big deal at all. This will be fine. So, with my left hand. And y'all, I know y'all see the shapes of these fabrics. They all pretty much about the same. <laughs> I would tell y'all where this came from. This is a little smaller. Probably just cut a piece off of that already. I don't know if y'all were doing the, the mask when it was doing COVID. These are pre-cut squares, pre-cut masks that I'm just using now. Just And that's just a perfect way to use um, like your, that type of fabric, your scrap fabric is for applique. So that's what I'm doing tonight, using some of that fabric up. And I'm just kind of rough cutting, it's not perfect. All right, so that's big enough for that. And this will also be done on the heat press, guys. Just make sure you use um, what is like butcher paper or something, like Teflon sheet, just to be sure that um, I'm just plugging up the iron right now. Just be sure that um. You use something to protect your heat press just in case if that adhesive, um, if it's not cut right, you know, because that's why it's, it's good to cut it smaller. Well, you can't see that, huh? It's best to cut it smaller, the heat and bond smaller than your um, 
your fabric just to be sure that that adhesive don't get on your heat press. Okay, so just letting this heat up a little bit. this here all righty so before I put the um, heat and bond on there I usually like to press my fabric too before I add that on there just to kind of straighten it out because sometimes those creases are in there from where it's been folded and when you put it in your applique, sometimes it'll cause some puckering or you'll see that line in there. I'm just trying to iron this on the back side, try not to iron on it either, which it should be fine, but so I'm gonna sit that one to the side, yeah. And I'm going to go ahead and press this one a little bit. It has like a line there in there. I hope this angle is okay for you guys. Back to the side. And press this other little piece. Try to get that line out of here. And um, Angela, Andrea Craig is, okay, she was asking, what is the final product the egg and the duck are going on? Uh, I'll show you that in just a second here. It's going to be real easy. It's kind of going back and forth between what I was going to do it on. Let me finish this up and then I'll be sure to answer that. Okay, so here we go. Go ahead and do this first one. And let me see if I can find. I usually like to put um, something on the back of it to protect it, like butcher paper, but that's inside in my house. So I'm just gonna use a piece of tearaway stabilizer. And that's just to be sure that it doesn't um, get that adhesive on my iron. So, and when you're doing this, you wanna be sure that you're not using steam. And usually I try to have this done, but um, I thank y'all for hanging in there with me. And I hope y'all can hear me okay. Is the sound okay? Okay, so let's see if that's okay. See that little end right there is still kind of coming up a little bit. I'm not sure if y'all can see that. That's so I'm gonna I'm gonna press it just a little bit more to be sure that I have that. Okay, let's see here. Still sticking up a tad bit. Do it this time if it don't work. We're not going to worry about it because it. I can just be sure that I, when I place it on a design that um, I don't put it 
on that part of it. It's all good. Okay, so place that to the side and let it cool off. And also, I'm placing this on the back side of the fabric, guys. Sound is perfect. Thank you, Angela and Stitches. Thanks for answering that. And, and Miss Andrea, thank you. And um, after I get this on the machine and the satin stitch starts to stitch around, because I want to say the way that it's digitized, I do all the placement and the tack downs back to back. And then after that, then it does all the satin stitches at one time, like at the end. Somebody please remind me to show y'all the um, design because. I put the link down in the description box. I found the design in two different places. So I wanted to share that with y'all. So somebody please remind me about that, please. Thank you. Okay, so that's good. And I'm gonna press that a little bit more because that line right there. And it should be fine though. I can probably just work around it because it's just, this part of the fabric is just gonna go inside of the, the bunny ears. So it's a very small part of it. So I should be able to work around it if nothing else. Okay, so here is the heat and bond for this piece. Okay. All right, so let's see here. Let's set this one to the side and go ahead and pour the adhesive. This is very important when y'all doing this, be sure to remove the adhesive and y'all can see the shine to that. That's the adhesive on the back of the fabric. So we're good to go. Yes. Unplug the iron, y'all. And put this to the side.
Okay, I'm back, y'all. <laughs> okay, so let me put that those things away, and then we're gonna go ahead and get to the machine. Oh, and I needed to hoop my product here. Let's catch the, um, I had a iron like that and it just stopped working. I really didn't use it that often. So I'm not sure what happened. Maybe I got a lemon. Oh no, I, I actually have two of those. I have one that I use for colored fabric. And then I have one that if I'm working on a, a order that has to go out and if it's white, I have one just for my whites. Because I don't know if y'all noticed, but on that the iron right there, it had like some dye on it, you know. So if I'm using, if I'm doing something white, I try to make sure that I use the other iron. So I'm sorry that that happened to you, though. But um, yes, I, I love mine. <laughs> okay, so let's go back over here. And I'm going to show y'all what I'm going to work on tonight. Okay. So I'm going to use my, my freestanding, my, my base. For my mighty hoops, so I'm gonna use my five and a half hoop. And um, I'm just gonna use this is what I'm stitching on, y'all. Um, I'm using a bib, it's just a little baby bib. Usually, I would try to go ahead and maybe press this out. Well, I guess I could have pressed it out while I had the iron, I forgot about it. But we're not, we're not going to worry about it. We'll find our, our markings another way. So tonight, I just wanted to show just how simple it is to get. Um, because I don't know about y'all, but I'm, I mean, I usually make my bibs. But if you're just wanting to try to personalize something, this is perfect. You know, I look for plain things. This is just a bib. And I want to say this came from. Grace, um, Creations of Grace. This came from um, Hobby Lobby. That's their brand. So this is actually something that my husband had purchased. And he was like, oh, I'm not going to use it. So I'm not like, why not? I'll use it. Right. So um, this is what we're going to use tonight. So I usually like to use little pens to get my placement. Let me place this here. Yeah, to see how it's gonna do on there. And I'll just unplug. I mean, I'm about to say unplug it, un um snap it, pull that the bell it has velcro on it. Okay. And I'm just gonna find the center. You can you can measure just whatever works for you. You can measure right left to right to find your center here, or you can just eyeball it. I'm going to fold it um, bottom sides together and just fold it in half and find your center that way. And the design is, I close it out. I want to say the design is like two and a half inches by almost four inches. So yes, this can be done on a single bed machine on a four by four. If you have a four by four, it can be done on there. So um, let me see how tall this is here. I guesstimate. And I usually start like here is where I start my ruler, like above that, the trim there. 
roughly anyway. So it's roughly about eight and a half inches. And the design is almost four. So I would say maybe go down maybe two inches down roughly. So I'm going to just place a pin here. And that's just showing how far um, I want the machine. Um, let's see, it's four inches here. Nope, that's going to be too far. As if I go halfway, roughly halfway, it's eight and a half. I'm probably going to do the center here. And then I'm just kind of step back and look at it. So this pen tonight means this is the center of my design. If you've been watching me a while, you know that I normally, like I'm doing a sweatshirt, I usually put a pen toward the top. That's the way I know how far I want my machine to go up. So a lot of times I don't necessarily mark the center of the design. Okay. So and I said it's about four inches. So it's going to come down to about here and about here. So that's fine. We're going to roll with that. And this is the center. And then I'll need to move it over a tad bit. But it'll be fine. And this is roughly my crosshair. Roughly. Okay. So I'll just go back and move this down a, a bit more to pinch a little bit more. Because so I didn't go, I didn't want to go too deep on it when I as far as putting it in the fabric because I didn't want to um pin on itself. So when I open it up, it wouldn't lay flat, but it's fine here. Okay. So roughly it looks about right. So now I just gotta make sure I get it straight on here so i'm gonna do two different stabilizers i'm gonna use a cut um a tear away and i'm gonna use a poly mesh so step away just to grab that and um it's a no-show poly mesh i like to use this on um baby shirts because it's not as thick, but I use a tear away too, just to give it a little bit more stability instead of using two pieces of the poly mesh. So I want to show y'all what the poly mesh looks like. Just trying to get a piece out of here. I'm going to stick together on me. I hope you guys are getting value out of here, out of this tonight. Come on, come on one. <laughs> but this is what the poly mesh looks like, right? So, ouch, I just stuck myself with a pen. So, and I did not try to make sure that this design fits in this five by five. So hopefully we, uh, we get that right, y'all. So I'm gonna use this here, I'm gonna use my five by five point. So, I'm going to go ahead and insert the bottom hoop. Thank you, Andrea. You said when, um, when I walk through the process, it's very good especially for beginners or projects someone has never done before including preparing a fabric awesome that thank you for that because i'm um, going through that process just now i'm thinking through my in my head was that too much <laughs> see that's the way i learn you know i'm a visual person and i like to see things done step by step you know as i was looking for a design today I was um, I was thinking back to I wish someone had told me about Pete and Bond early on 
you know? So that's why I try to include things like that here. That way you don't miss those steps because they're, they're important steps because it's like I was scratching my head. I was like, why in the world is my fabric brand? What is going on? Okay, so let's get back. Let's focus. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to cut this some. Um, I don't know how long y'all see how long it is, but I'm going to just kind of cut cut it off some. Because sometimes with this um, hooping station, sometimes if your, um, your stabilizer is hanging off, when you're putting your item on, sometimes it'll kind of shift things. So just want to make sure it fits on there, but not too much extra. So let's hope I cut it right. <laughs> okay, so this is my, um, my tearaway, right? I normally do not use tearaway on clothing, but I'm using tearaway to add a little bit more stability to this poly mesh or no show poly mesh, right? So just something to try to remember when you're using poly mesh and if you're using tearaway like I'm doing, you want to make sure that the poly mesh is closer to um, the, it's, what am I trying to say here? It's the first layer on your item. So that way your tearaway is on the bottom. So after you finish stitching, you just rip your tearaway off, right? You don't want the tearaway to be close to your item. And then, you know, it's underneath your poly mesh, if that makes sense. I hope that makes sense, guys. Okay, so go ahead and put this on top of here. So I'm going to go ahead and lock in. And we're going to go ahead and put the bib on. And I'm just going to kind of guess. Hopefully I get the placement right because I usually like the pressed it, but I already done, uh, turned my iron off. So this is not for anybody. Um, I usually try to press a line there so you can line. Let's see if I can show you. You can line your center up with this. And I don't know if you can, you probably can't see that little thing, right? That little notch also lining up with that. That's why I love my hoops, y'all. I love it. I love, love, love them. And also, by the way, I thank you, who the ones that who have used my code to purchase Mighty Hoops. Congratulations, number one, on investing in yourself and your business to buy Mighty Hoops because it's much easier. And number two, that also helps with um, the studio here. That, that's a way to give back to the studio so I can come out here and keep doing what I'm doing. Um, so I thank y'all for that. The ones that who have used any codes you know, on, on my page at all, I appreciate it, y'all. I really do. Okay, so let's focus. <laughs> all right, so... I'm just guessing, y'all. I hope I get the placement right on this because, again, my little middle thing is not there. But this is here and kind of somewhat use this. It's about right. And it's kind of wonky because I didn't really do it exactly straight. But with this hooping station, you can kind of just look, kind of just eyeball. I know I got y'all kind of crooked there. But you just kind of eyeball about where it hits here. Hopefully we get some lighting soon too, y'all. Um, pull it down just a tad bit. You can see about where it hits on that little gold thing there. This little gold one here. So you're just kind of eyeballing it if you don't have it like your crosshair drawn. And also with this tag, depends on how big your design is. You want to make sure your tag is kind of sticking out so it doesn't get in your stitching. Okay? So gonna go ahead and go ahead and I'm gonna just kind of put it down a little bit to see where it goes okay and I just kind of put my hand under there a little bit so it wouldn't snap just to kind of check the placement somewhat okay so that's it so I know y'all see that little ripple there and looking at this looking on this side it got a little bit more on this side on this side here than that side so, but as long as I got my crosshair 
marked. I'll try my best to line it up with that. I'm going to rehoop this because this um, design is five tall and true. It's almost five tall. A lot of times you don't get a true five inches because of the way the press of foot is made on your machine. I learned that when I was doing some jackets. And um, so no problem. We're just going to rehoop it, right? No problem. Okay, so stick that back on there. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect because it's not for anybody. But you should aim for it to be, you know, centered right and placement and everything good. Okay, so where is the middle here? I don't see a middle um, from top to bottom here. So I want to be sure that I get this toward the middle. Just move it up a tad bit. And also you can kind of feel about where your bib hits at on a corner of this here too. And this is also when you see when products are kind of wonky, you know, like not made the best. So we're gonna see, let's see here. Okay, so that's a little better. Let me just pull it down just a tad bit. And that's probably bubbly like that because I didn't press this here. See this here? That's the middle there. So it's pretty close. Hopefully I can just move the machine um, to kind of get it in the middle. And I'm going to move this to the side here. And I hope I'm not taking up too much of y'all's time here. So I want to just you see that little there. Just want to kind of lightly tug on it. Sometimes you can just kind of open it up just a tiny bit. And just kind of pull that out. Don't over pull it though, because it will cause puckering. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to pull this side just a tiny bit as well. Just a tiny bit. And be careful when you're trying to open these hoops up because, hey, <laughs> it's not back, honey. Okay. So even after I take that pan out, y'all can see where it's kind of lifted at there. Y'all see that little bubble in it? And let's remove the pins. I'll be sure to glance back at that again just to be sure that it's straight. Okay. Just pull this just a little bit at the bottom. Okay. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and go to the machine and switch the view for y'all. <clears throat> okay, and we're back, y'all. I hope this is helpful for y'all. Let me know if you're getting any value out of this. And if you haven't done, if you're getting value, y'all remember to hit, give it a thumbs up, okay? Thank y'all. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and go to the machine. And I have to put thread on here as well. Let's see if I can use a different color thread. Oh, excuse me. And I got a big mosquito in here, y'all. So. Let's see, I'm probably going to leave that thread on there. It's going to be a little off, but it'll be all right, I believe. I'm going to use that pink thread. And I need to add the yellow. 
And um, this one here, I'm going to add these to the machine. All right. So. Gonna take these off, and if you're threading a multi needle, you know the easiest way to do it is to cut the one that's on there, tie the, the new one that's going on, and just pull it through. Pull it out the needle though before you pull it through. I will say, I have seen where I think on John Deere's page they show where it's a way to put a knot in there that it will pull through the needle. But it's just something that I have not really tried to do. So for me, in this house, in this studio, <laughs> we just always just be sure to un to take it out the needle before we pull it through. But there is a technique out there. And I'm just trying to tie these together. Also, while I'm making sure you don't tangle anything else up with this as far as your other threads that probably will not go good and i hope y'all can hear me i just thought about it with me moving over this way hope y'all can hear me okay so that's one spool on now i need to add my other spool on here Thank y'all for showing up each week, guys. I really appreciate y'all. Like, really, really. Y'all lift my spirit. Y'all just don't know, but you lift my spirit each week that y'all show up over here. Okay, so let's see. I got to take one off. Take a thread off over here. Actually, I can take the silver one off and I can reach it from over there. So let's see here. And I know y'all can't see me. Sorry about that. I'm still here. <laughs> Trying not to let y'all see too much of my jump back here. Good Lord. So I put my other spool on and got three colors in my hand. I got too many going on. So let's okay, there we go. Picking it up. And I always like to take the spool and kind of roll the extra thread on here before I start pulling it. That way I can ensure that I don't have anything else connected to it before I pull it through. These mature eyes, you plan tricks on them. Okay, there we go. Let's go. Okay, so that is number two. I'm going to pull that out of the needle. And that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The eighth needle. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and sit down and go ahead and thread this. Let's see here. Why did I pull the wrong one? <laughs> Why did I pull the wrong one, y'all? It wasn't number two. <laughs> oh my lord. One, two, three, four, five. Number five. Pull the wrong one, y'all. Jeez Louise, what am I thinking? <laughs> All right, that's the right one. So it's no problem. I'll just have to go back and thread number two because I mistakenly pulled the wrong one out. And number three. Pulling that on through. Oh, it popped, y'all. Make sure your, your knot is tight. So it's no problem because guess what? It came far enough through where I can just take it and finish it at the bottom here. 
So it worked out for us. All right, so now I'm just gonna go ahead and thread the machine. Well, not thread, well, thread the needle. And it came undone, so I'm gonna make sure everything's good. All right, so it's good. Let me go ahead and go, go ahead and thread the needle. And y'all don't know if y'all remember last week when Renita was here, she said to aim for not directly for the hole of the needle, but like just above it, and it puts it pushes it straight on in. So I think it worked for me just time. Let's see if it work again. And I know y'all can't see this part. So I just kind of talk through it as I'm going. And number five, I'm going to get this one threaded. Oh, Lord, I can't see it. Going there. Yes, it went in there. It does not here. Okay, there we go. And I want more to go because I made the mistake and pulled the wrong one out. <clears throat> let's go, let's go, let's go. Oh my goodness. Oh, there is some truth to that, y'all. Because you it's a groove in the front of that needle. You um go above it, it hit that groove and go straight on in. There is some truth to it. Y'all need to try it. All right, so they're all threaded. Now I just need to go down through the presser foot. Yep, yep, yep. Y'all, I remember when I first got this machine. Huh, this was the scariest thing, y'all. Oh, my goodness. And it looks like my thread just got hung on the next needle. My Lord. Let's see here. Okay, there we go. Back in business. This was the scariest thing. Because when I first got it, you know, I was having a problem here and there, not often, where the thread would pop like it just did. Like at the bottom, it'll, you know, it'd be a thread break, is what the machine will say. And I'm like, shucks, I, I can do this. Because a lot of times you just kind of look at the, the needle next to it. Normally, that'll help you get things rethreaded, you know? So that's just another tip for you guys. Don't get frustrated. Just try to look at the needle or whatever next to it and just try to rethread it from there. Okay, we in business, y'all. Okay, so let me cut these a little bit. And now, let's see, I'm going to go ahead and pull a design up, guys. And I wish y'all can see this. Hopefully, we'll get a better view. Where, oh, where? Come on, where are you? Okay, there we are. 
I hope y'all still hanging in there with me over there. Okay, so I'm gonna use, I wanna say a C. Change my hold size. Now, before I put my colors in, y'all, I want to take the machine and check the um, the placement because I want to be sure. Let me plug this other phone up here just a moment, guys. I want to be sure that it fits inside of it. So let's see here. Okay. So I'm just going to circle the hoop here before I put my colors in. I hope I, I hope that it fits in there. Let's see. Let's try that again. Okay. And it's centered here. Maybe move it up just a tad bit. Try one more time, y'all. Okay, so it looked like it's going to work. So I'm going to just slide this off here. Well, let me get one more thing here. So it's going to look to right, and then it's not going to hit the book. Y'all, I promise I have trust issues. Um, Lord, um, that's how my press the foot got bent on number one because of the mighty hoop. Um, geez, Louise. And that's the worst sound you ever want to hear is your machine hitting that hoop, y'all. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so now I'm just going to go ahead and put my colors in, y'all. Okay, so I'm going to just remember something here. Let me take this off for a moment. Because I forgot I took a picture of it on my phone when I put my colors in. But I'll use my other phone for the other angle there. Y'all still hanging in there with me? Let me kind of read the comments here. Okay. I love the Thursday night embroidery check. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> so. Thank y'all for hanging in there, y'all. Y'all the real MVPs. You hear me? Okay, so now I'm just trying to pull up my design because I always take a picture of my editing software with PES and um, designs. Whenever you open it up in your editing software and you take it to your brother machine, the color stays in there. But for the DST files with this machine, when you move it from your editing software to your machine, the colors do not remain. So I always just take a picture of it and just kind of go from there. So I'm going to use a different color tonight. That way y'all can see the placement and the tack down, okay? So it's gonna be a color underneath that doesn't really go with it, but I'm gonna do that I probably can just use pink for everything. That's what I'll do. I'll just use pink for everything. That's number two. For all the placement and the tack downs. That way y'all can, except for the pink, you won't be able to see the pink. Okay. We're just going to roll with it because I didn't. I was trying to think of a color that will stand out. 
um, I can use the, uh, the light purple, and that's number 15. We'll keep it. 15. So I'm going to put 15 for all my placement stitches, my placement and my tag downs. That way, hopefully, y'all can see it on camera. Okay, so, and then the number seven is going to be pink. That's number two. And, and I hope this is enough white on there. Okay. And the brown, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And the black. Fourteen. And pink, number two. Okay. Let's hope that I got these right here. What was number seven? Oh, okay. That was on the seven. It was inside of the, the ears. So for all the placement and tag downs, I want to make sure that I do. I want the machine to come out to me or the hoop to come out. So we're going to offsets for all of those. Okay. So that's it. And let's let me glance back over here again. Seven, six, pink, one, two, white, one, three, number nine, each yellow, number five, number nine, number nine, each yellow, one, two, four, five. Brown. I got something really off here. Let me go back. Let me check myself. So one through six is two purples. That's 15. Number seven is pink. Number eight is white. It's number three. And then this brown. One, two, three. Five, six, seven, eight. Okay, uh, uh, number two, number eight, this one, number three, number nine. She'll one, two, three, four, five, nine is five. And number 10 is the brown. Number 10, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Six, seven, eight. Number 10 is the black. Number 11 is the black. Number 10. And number 12, almost missed one. Number 2. Okay, so hopefully I got this right, y'all, because I totally almost missed the thread color. One through six is the placement and tag downs. Seven is pink, two, number two, number three, yellow, one, two, four, five, number nine, is five, number ten. And then number 12 is pink. Okay, y'all. Thank you, thank you, thank you, y'all. So I got, I think I got it right. We're going to see when we start stitching. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and go to the machine, y'all. All right, y'all. Hope y'all still hanging tight over there with me. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and remove these pins off of here. And it I'm going to kind of pull it just a tad bit here because it's still a little bit um, not as flat as I would like it to be. So I'm just kind of pull it just a tad bit here. And you want to kind of ease that 
poop open just a tad bit. Be careful so it does not snap your fingers. Okay, so let's hope we got it good. Okay, so um, check my bobbin. Oh, and it's coming out of there. No problem. Okay, so it's good to go. Let me just take it out of there just to be sure. Okay. Be careful with your bobbins when you have your bobbins out so you don't drop them. Because if you drop them, I heard many people say you might as well just chunk it because it messes it up. Okay. So. Try that again. I was trying to make sure I heard that snap or the click. One moment here. I'm just sitting right here, just sitting down to redo this because it came out when I stuck it in the machine. Okay, so. Okay, so I'm going to cut it a little bit here. I don't know if y'all can see that. Use a cut it maybe like about two inches hanging off of there. Before you put it back in there. And make sure it's in the pigtail. And when you put it back in there, make sure you hit that click. All right, so let's get this on the machine. And I also like to check the back of the hoop, too, because even with the mighty hoop, sometimes you just want to be sure that it's flat and make sure um, everything is good to go on the back side. So let's go. So that's good. That arm, I don't know why my arm loosens up like that. I replaced the screw in it for some reason it still um like shifts or something. I'm not sure what that's about. But I'm gonna take the time to go ahead and tighten it up because especially when you're going on and off the machine with this applique. Last thing you want is for this thing to shift on you when you're going on the machine, right? So, oh, I see that mosquito on the back wall over there. And I don't know if I'm calling it the right thing. It's a big bug on the wall. Okay, so, again, <laughs> I'm just tightening up this arm on here, guys. Because I don't want it to be shifting when I start my project. I had that happen to me. Um, no, but the design shifted in the hoop. And I had to line it up and try to find where that design was because if not, I would have wasted a sweat shirt. So I was able to get it lined back up. But who wants to go through that? Nobody, right? <laughs> All right, so let's get this on the machine. All righty. Thank you, guys. How long have we been on here? We've already been on here almost an hour and a half, guys. That was not my intention. I don't know what is going on. I wonder if this little thing is loose. Okay, there we go. Show some underneath the notches. Sure, my bib is not underneath and it's kind of hanging out there. So I'm gonna trace one more time. Okay, 
Okay, so we're ready to go, guys. Finally. Okay, so that's the first takedown, and that's for the ears. I was going to use white fabric on there. So make sure it's covered. And I like to use like a ruler or something just to hold it because I love my fingers. Love, love, love them. Okay, so. Okay, so okay. So let's move this out the way. Yeah, so so I used um a different color thread just so y'all can see it on camera. That's the bunny ears. Usually, when you do an applique, whatever color fabric you use, that's the color um thread you want to use to tack your fabric down. But I just did it in a different color to hope that you guys can see it off of um like on camera right so let me go ahead and get my um my scissors and I hope you guys can see yes I wasted some fabric here I'm gonna go back and clean that up when I go back around. This is a little tricky with these um the mighty hoop because your scissors tend to stick. Ah, there we go. How well y'all can see that. Uh, <laughs> it's like playing tug of war. I promise y'all, I'm not nervous. <laughs> it looks like I'm nervous because I'm kind of fighting with the magnets on the hoop and trying to let it turn my scissors are loose. Turn them loose. Yeah, I'm just trying to go back in a tad bit. So I'm just going to cut this large part off and make it a little easier to work with. Okay, so I'm just going to go in just a little bit closer. Okay. 
And I see that that didn't tack that down too good. I can see what the red kind of lifting up under there. I'm not going to worry about it too much, though, because when it goes around and do the finishing stitch or the satin stitch, it'll be fine. It should tack it down. All right, so let's get this one here. Or did I cut it? I don't know. Maybe I cut it. I'm not sure. That's a possibility, too, because we do make mistakes. Oh, did it have any stitches there? I don't know. I didn't really pay attention. Okay, so just cut a little bit there. Okay, so we're done with that. Okay. So we're gonna go back to the machine. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started back up. And this design is only about 5,000 stitches, y'all. The thing that takes the longest is the, um, the cutting the applique part. Okay. So, y'all see that there? That's the, um, the chick. I didn't even need to take that off the machine. Okay. So, we're going to go back to the machine. And I'm just going to go ahead and lay my yellow fabric. And again, if you're doing this, you want to be sure. It's always a good idea to do your thread color the same as your, your, um, your fabric. Because sometimes I have had designs where I use a different color on the bottom and it showed through the stitching. So that's why it's a good idea to use um, the same color thread as your fabric, right? Okay, so got the fabric down. Y'all still there. Okay, so that's the chick. And I did it in purple. That way y'all can see it on camera. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and cut this out. And also, Pretty Eyes Covington, I'm not sure if you're still in here. I think you asked about the proper way, to like to do it, the um, proper way to use the duckbill scissors. At least what I think is the right way to use them. Everybody I've seen uses them a different way. And I hope y'all can see. But the, uh, the duckbill, this side here, and looks like I'm lagging. One moment here. Okay. Okay, so the duck bill protects your fabric from cutting it, right? Hey, Miss Gigi, thank you for coming in. Okay, so that, that duck bill is usually on top of the fabric. Your blade, the part that you're cutting, it goes underneath the fabric. It's almost like doing things in reverse. You know, like if you're, you usually think to go this way, like with me, I'm left-handed. Like if you're cutting right-handed, you think to go this way, right? To go around. But with duck bill scissors, it's the opposite. And I'm left-handed, so... 
it's like I'm going instead of going this way to cut, I'm going this way to cut. Now, I hope that makes sense because the purpose of the duck bill, that shape, is to protect the fabric that you're not trying to cut. Okay, so let's go ahead and get this cut. It looked like a little piece of that didn't get any um, heat and bond on it. I didn't move it up enough. But we're going to see if it's going to work. If I don't cut the fabric here. I cut the bib. That's a tight little spot right there. And again, I did this in purple thread so y'all can see it to see what I'm trying to cut around. Okay. This magnetic hoops, it's fighting against me. Just a little bit there. Almost done here. So I gotta go back in here, that area there, that was small nook. Let's have the wrong scissors. He's feeling dumb, or is it just me? Almost done. Okay. okay, so let's hope that I got enough from around it. Let's see what that, how thick the satin stitch is. Okay, so get that off of there. All right, gonna go back to the machine now. Thank y'all for hanging in there. This has been a long one. That's no intentions of hanging out this long tonight. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Uh, the last thing that's gonna do is the um the egg. 
just putting the fabric on. I'm not going to take it off the machine because he said gave me an offset, so it came out to me. I'm just putting the fabric on. Let's hold this on here. Okay, here we go. That's just the egg. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this out, and then it's going to go into the side stitches. Ooh, look at that. I didn't think about those little things. And what's on? It's a little further away from them hoops. So hopefully, my scissors don't stick too bad. Making y'all dizzy, keep <laughs> keep moving the hoop. Let's see, let's get that to you. That wasn't too bad. Getting stuck on there. <laughs> He's getting stuck on the hoop. All right. So let me go back on this side here, clean that up just a little bit more. And y'all, if anyone, because I, I, I'm left-handed, so I don't know if anybody else that watches is left-handed and need duckbill scissors or would like to get duckbill scissors. I found them on online, and I link those in the description box if you need um, or want to purchase a pair of these left-handed duckbill scissors. This is a brand that I love. It's hard to been hard for me to find them, but I looked up and found them. Um, I'm just taking off a layer of this here so I can kind of just look at that right there, a little bubble right there. And hopefully it won't, it'll be okay since it's not in the way of the stitching. It's at the bottom. So anyway, I was saying I was using this here just to kind of get the little pieces of fabric from where I cut. Okay, so all right, y'all, so this is how we're looking. So we're going to go ahead and go back to the machine now. And... Mm 
just don't get in the way. Oh, okay. So it's on the inside of the ear. I thought I had the wrong color chosen. Okay. So now I want to go ahead and um and pull up that design, y'all. Let's see here. And thank y'all so much because I know tonight has been a long night. I do thank each and every one of you that have come in. And I, it's all my fault because I was not really prepared. So I, I really appreciate you guys. Yeah, we're back. <laughs> okay, so I wanted to share my screen just to show you guys where that design came from. So, and let's see here. I'm going to read the comments really quickly. Um, she is saying good evening, and I want to back up too because I thought I'd seen um, crafty Puerto Rican come in, and I, I don't think I said hello. Thank you for coming in if you're still here. I do apologize because I think I was kind of in between finish of something and then trying to go back and read those comments, and I think I missed it. But, um, if you're still in here, crafty Puerto Rican, Juana, thank you for coming in. And if there's anybody else that I miss, y'all. I do apologize, but hello. <laughs> so, okay, so let's go back here. And Andrea said, I'm trying to get comfortable with the duckbill scissors. Yeah, that, that is something too. Now, um, I just had another con. Is uh oh, put my arm all on the camera. This is also, I would I think they call these double curve scissors. Or is that double curve? This is another type of applique scissors. You know, just find the one that you that works for you. And these are, can be used for maybe a different type of applique to be able to get in closer spots or something too, right? So there's so many different ones. And I got the little bit of orange curved ones too. It's different ones. But I'm um, just try some different ones because when you get the one that you like, you, you'll know. <laughs> It's almost fi like finding the perfect wedding dress. You'll know when it's the right scissors. Okay, so let's see here. And um, Ms. Gigi is saying, I just got my duck bills today. Awesome. Let me know how we go. Um, let me know if you like those. Just making sure. I'm just looking to see what color it was going to, y'all. And uh, Natasha, when you get a chance... Can you make a video on how to add the mighty hoops to your buy um, so the machine recognizes the hoops? 1501. Now, with that, Miss um, Gigi, I only added one. The machine is shaking. I thought I had it balanced, but okay, sorry. It seemed like it's shaking a lot over there. Um, one moment, let me turn this. Down. Okay, so, all right, so, um, oh, Miss Gigi, as far as adding the hoops to the machine, I only added one hoop to the machine, my 8 by 9 and that was because that was the very first hoop that I got. Um, I haven't added any of the other ones to it because um, Renita in, uh, from the buy group, she was in here last week, she shared with me another way to get around using that because you still should be tracing your machine anyway, whether it recognizes the machine, the hoop or not, you should still trace, right? So the, the tip that Renita sh shared with me, Renita Danae, that she shared with me, like when well, I'm using my five by five, I will go to my green hoops that come with the machine and see what letter, what letter matches with that hoop. And then that's the one that I use to select when I'm using my Mighty Hoops. Because you still should be tracing anyway. So I hope that helps. If not, I'll, um, there was someone in the buy group that created a really good video for that. I'll make myself a note and I'll go back and tag or put that in the description box. So you can check that out and see if that helps. If you're not really comfortable 
with choosing the size of the green hoop to match your magnet, your uh, mighty hoop. So I'll go back and I'll put that in the description, Miss GG. Okay. So let's see. I found them difficult. Miss Angela Stitching Styles. It's, um, Angela and Stitches. Sorry. I find them difficult, but to be difficult, to be very precise, precision. Right. And again, you just pick the ones and just try what and see what works for you and just kind of go with that. Oh, y'all, it's coming out so pretty. <laughs> Okay, so Gigi, you make it look so easy. Look, you just gotta keep trying it, you know. Sometimes I do run into this like, oh, I could have cut that shorter or something like that, you know. Um, so you just keep working at it. This embroidery, any craft, you just have to continue working at it until you get it, you know. Just gotta be patient with yourself. And Renita, hey Renita, I didn't know you was in here. I was just talking about you, girl. <laughs> Hey, you say trying to be on my level. Oh, no, we, we, we're trying to get it together, Renita. Thank you for coming in. I didn't know you was in here, hon. And um, Andrea is saying, I am better with the curved ones. Yeah, so that, that's good. So you just find what works and roll with it. Oh, y'all, that's looking so pretty. <laughs> okay, so um, Jacqueline is saying, hey, Natasha and everyone in the chat. Hey, thank you for coming in. Hello. And Gigi, oh, okay, thank you. That would be great. Okay, great. So I'll go back and I'll link that video. Um, if I don't do it tonight, just look back in the um, description box on tomorrow. That'll give me time to get it and put the link there. Um, Zach, I don't remember his last name, but he did a really good video. He's in the buy group. Really good video showing how to add the Mighty Hoops. Okay, so Andrea said, I have a 12 needle, not the same brand. Mine lets me pick no hoop. I make sure to trace again, again. Right, that's a good idea. Now, um, also, when I first got this machine, we were trying to figure out how to add hoops and things like that. Or with the 8 and one hoops, the foot magnetic 8 and one hoops that buy sales, they will say, oh, just use other on your machine. Other, when you're doing applique, does not work. It will not shift that hoop out to you, at least from what I've tried. It always shifts it to the size and then to the side of your machine, and it is snatched up off. So if you come across anything that says use other, if you're using, if you're doing applique, it is, for me, on my machine, it did not work. So just note to yourself um, with that. And Miss Andrew, thank you for sharing that, um, that you have a 12 needle machine and you're still hanging out of here. That's awesome because I have the buy machine. I have a, uh, the brother machines that I use, but I was hoping that if you don't have a buy machine that you can still apply these embroidery tips and things like that too whatever machine you have so i'm glad to know that hopefully you're getting some value over here too now <laughs> so yeah yeah oh my goodness oh my goodness it's almost done y'all oh it's so pretty <laughs> i don't know what i'm doing think i can dance over here y'all i can't dance <laughs> it's done it's done it's done Hey, Baby Giant Services, thank you for coming in. Oh, my goodness. Y'all. <laughs> thank y'all for helping me pick the colors because I have to go back to school. So I'm like, I didn't know what color to check. Okay, so let's see if y'all can see the tension, guys. Hey, wait, wrong way. Y'all see the tension on there? I know y'all probably can see the pink. I don't know how well you can see the yellow. The white, you won't be able to see it because um, it's white on the top, right? So look at that. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness, I love the colors. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> okay, y'all, here we go with my shenanigans, right? So. I'm going to go ahead and take it off the hoop. Uh-oh. And 
Yeah, remember the tearaway that was on the back, right? And again, I use tearaway if I'm doing a kid, um, a kid shirt or something like that. I usually use poly mesh because it's not as as rough as the uh, the other cutaway that I have. Struggling with my words over here, y'all. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull as much as that off as I can. Even so, I took it off and it came off the the outside. And then I also go on the inside here and pull out any that I see. And um, if you have a hard time pulling it out, see like here, if you're having a hard time pulling it out, you can always just go in with you some tweezers, right? And I will pull off as much as the tear away that I can get off. Because remember the, the poly mesh is what I was trying to cut a little closer to the design. So, Let's go ahead and do that. Let's see here. And um, if this was a onesie, I would go back and I would use, um, what's the name of it? Some of them say it, what cloud cover, one second, let me get it because my I'm having a brain for it right now. Tender touch. We use it the tender touch if it was a onesie after you cut it, cut all your stabilizer off. Use um it's tender touch. Tender touch. And that just um covers up the stitches so it doesn't irritate the baby's skin, right? So I'll go over that again, so just in case if I didn't explain it good. Okay. And I won't put tender touch on this because this won't be, I'm shaking out, huh? Sorry. So I won't, I will not put it on the bib because you know the bib is on top of the baby shirt. So I won't, won't will not put the tender touch on the bib. And one said, who have been watching me, I'm pretty sure, well, you know, I make my bibs in the hoop. But I wanted to share this because this is, if you're not ready to try um, in the hoop bibs, or if you don't have a hoop that's big enough to do in the hoop bibs, this is a option, right? And again, this was purchased from Hobby Lobby. So if you got a Hobby Lobby, you can purchase these. And this is not perfect, but um, I just went around and just kind of cut around it. That's the poly mesh. Well, it's a little hard to maybe see that. Jeez Louise. So that's the poly mesh there. You just kind of cut around it. And yeah. And also, if this was a onesie, this is when I would do the um, the tender touch. Right, yeah, it's so cute. It's so cute. <laughs> okay, so Andrea saying there is value. Most of those, most of the multi needle machines are basically the same. And I, right, that is true. A lot of them are. You know, you know how to work your machine as far as the buttons on it. It's technique too. You know, after you find out how to operate your machine is technique so i was hoping that that's what you all are getting from over here is the technique side of things and i try to make it fun so it's always it's usually going to be something simple or something fun over here right because i don't want to focus too much on going through stuff so so fast that you don't get it you know because when i first started embroidery that's how it was a little rough because they don't always show all the steps too but anyway anyway let's focus <laughs> Yeah, look, isn't that cute? Oh, look at that. And uh, y'all probably can't really see it, but the um, this has a little glitter in it too. That's real cute. Y'all look, <laughs> isn't that cute? It's something so simple, you know, and 
looking at this, another way to um, add personalization, I, I didn't add personalization because I wouldn't know who to give it to, but um, you can add the baby's name on there. Now, this will fit in a four by four, but if you're going to add a name, you might have to use a five by seven hoop, right? So where they, oh, I forgot to show y'all where I got the design from. I'm going to have to go back and show that if y'all interested in it. Um, or I can just tell y'all about it. Um, the place I got the design for, they were like, you can put the baby's name in there. But I think that's kind of small, you know. Um, but you can put the baby's name on the bottom or wherever you want to. Or put Happy Easter, First Easter or something like that. That's just a way to personalize it. So, yeah, isn't that cute? And well, how was my placement, y'all? What that placement looked like? Yeah. But well, yeah, that turned out real cute. But yeah, but you add some personalization to it to make the design bigger. Okay, so the design. Okay, Ms. Jacqueline saying, how cute is that? Thank you, Gigi saying, love it. Nina Stitching Styles is saying, too cute. Thank y'all, thank y'all, thank y'all. So I want to just talk about the design, guys. Something that I noticed. I, I noticed this some time ago, but... um. I just want to share it with y'all because a lot of the um, designs that I get that I use over here, I use from um, Creative Fabrica, right? So let me see if I can just pull the design up real quick, guys. Because I want to just show you the two places that, that it's at. And... And give me one moment. I'm going to share my screen as soon as I find it, guys. And um, let's see here. Okay, so I got one pulled up in one moment. And I have these linked down in the description box. And they are um, they are affiliate links, guys. Let's see here. Thank y'all for being patient. I just wanted to show y'all this. Because um, I noticed it some time ago, but I don't think some people really realize it or paid attention. Okay, now, y'all still with me? <laughs> okay, so I found one of them. Having a little trouble finding the other one, but give me a second. That's because I'm trying to pull this up, guys. No, let me try to go back over here. Just a moment, y'all. Thank y'all for hanging in there, y'all, because I really want to show y'all this. <laughs> uh, let's see here. I 
Yeah, I think I have it. Let's see here. Okay, got it. Okay, so let's, what was this saying? Okay, all right, so let me share my screen, guys. Okay, so can y'all see that? Okay, so this is the first place that I've seen this design. This is on Creative Fabric, right? And then let's see if I can switch, pull the other one up. I'll stop that one. And then the same design on Etsy. So I want to show that because um, a lot of the designs that I use, I, I pull them from Creative Fabrica. And it's mainly because Creative Fabrica is like a, it's a monthly thing, or I think you can do like a, a year subscription. And by the time you purchase the designs off of Etsy and other different places, you know, so I just wanted to share that with y'all because I, I found the same exact design. It's the same digitizer. The name from one shop from Creative Fabrica to um, Etsy, the names are a little different. But looking at both of them store on Etsy and on Creative Fabrica, they pretty much have the same designs, you know. So I just wanted to share that with y'all. And I hope that helped y'all. <laughs> so, and so again, this is what we did today. So y'all, I think that is it, y'all. I did not mean to hold y'all this long, um, two hours. And it's all my fault because I, I, was, I was struggling tonight, trying, well, today trying to figure out a design. So I thank y'all so much for coming in and hanging out. Um, Pia Pump Pumpkin Studio. Hi, Latasha. Hi, hi. Thank you for coming in. We are about to close it out, y'all. So I want to thank each and every one of y'all for coming out and hanging out with me. And, and also just showing up for yourself, you know, because uh, again, I'm hoping that you guys are getting... Um, some value over here. I hope this is helpful. So if nothing else, you know, you're showing up for yourself to learn a different techniques and things like that. So man, I thank y'all, especially ones who have been in here ever since I, I started going live tonight and was waiting on me to log in. <laughs> thank y'all so much. So if that'll be it, um, you're going to go ahead and shut this out. Um, thanks again, y'all. Like, really, thanks for showing up. Thank you for the shares, the likes, the comments. Um, if it's anybody that you think this will be helpful for, share it out. If it's any groups that this will be helpful for, share it out. But don't get in trouble now. Make sure y'all follow the rules. If they say don't share it, don't share it. I don't want to get anybody in trouble. That's not um, what I'm for, right? So, but if anybody, you know, that you think this will be helpful for, please share it out. And um, thanks again for the ones though, who have been using those affiliate links. It doesn't cost you any more, but it just gives a channel just a little kickback, you know, so I can still put that back into the channel. So thank you all so much for that. And um, if that'll be all, y'all, we're going to see y'all next week. And my hope is to go to come in at seven again seven central time um is the time i'm trying to aim to come in so thank y'all so much y'all i really appreciate you guys and until next time we'll see y'all next week okay good night y'all <laughs>